Hey guys, you're back with Juzzy, and today we're looking at the install of genuine K-Speed parts. So we're looking at the Diablo front engine cover for the Honda Rebel 500. When you purchase this engine cover from K-Speed, you can buy it from two websites. One is the K-Speed Net Thailand original website, or you can buy it through their Japanese um, outlet based out of Japan. When you buy these parts, there is a string of copy or replicas that are available on eBay, AliExpress, etc. The reason I decided to go with the genuine item because I didn't want to have any fitment issues. When you have a look at the genuine parts, you can tell that they're genuine because they are stamped. They also have the decal and they come with heat reflective tape and absorption matter to prevent the plastics from warping. You'll also see that the fit and the finish is super good. Everything is like an original mold piece so there are no warpage or bad fitting issues. As you can see here they come with bolts and it also comes with a genuine bracket not some sort of makeshift part that's not des that's designed to try and fit but wasn't designed originally that way. I've got a whole string of K-Speed parts and they arrived from K-Speed in this box. Everything was well packaged, everything was bagged and everything came with the original decals etc. I'd really appreciate it if you took a minute to pause this video and subscribe to my channel because over the coming weeks, you're going to see a whole string of K-Speed performance parts that are going to turn this Honda Rebel 2022 Special Edition into something very different looking. Now I've just done a quick install of the Oxford Foghorn and I wanted it to be out of the way so that it didn't have any clearance issues with the belly pan. Not only does it look neat and serves a purpose for if you're going to install the belly pan, but even if you don't install the belly pan slash engine cover, as you can see, it's well tucked out of the way and it makes for a much neater look. Now I haven't even painted the back part of that horn, but as you can see, you cannot even see it. So it looks great. Now I'm a complete novice at installing anything to do with motorbike parts. I um, have a history and if you look at this channel you'll see a whole bunch of videos for the Lancer Evo 10 which I feel very comfortable with. But I guess the good point of this video is to show that even if you don't know how to install these parts you can finally find a guy that speaks English that's on YouTube and that can clearly explain how to install these parts so that you've got not only a great looking ride, but a customized ride. So no instructions come um, in the box for any of the K-Speed items. The K-Speed Thailand website doesn't have any instructions either, but if you go to the kspeed.com Japanese website, then in their pictures, if you swipe across, you will see that um, some of the parts like these, kind of aesthetic body parts, etc., they do come with some instructions so that you at least have a general idea of how to get it working. Now, I'll throw up on the screen uh, the pictures that are for this listing. And this uh, particular part is for, uh, I believe, the 300 and the 500 only. You can get an 1100 version, it's just that where all the holes are for this part won't line up if you've got the 1100. So it does come with this bracket which is used underneath the motorbike, at least that's my understanding, to keep the side fairing sort of in place. I've got no idea exactly how that's going to mount out but we're going to find out soon. I've also had a look and it doesn't look like these frame sliders I've installed have to be removed because the side of the engine cover goes around it, so that's a bonus. And in my videos, you'll see that I installed an aftermarket radiator cover. I removed the, the plastic 
factory one. On the KSP Japanese site, it does suggest that you can put some washers in here so that you don't have rubbing going on. But because this isn't my factory part and it's aluminium, I'm not concerned about this getting scratched up at all. This was actually a cheap part to buy. It's not a genuine K-Speed part. It's, this is a part that I actually purchased from AliExpress and it arrived perfect. And as you can see, it's great. Has no issues um, hitting these gaiters at all when you're full lock on the steering. So everything works fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just go about trying to install this. Now, it doesn't appear that this part affixes to any part on the bike. It actually just mounts to these side pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo these two bolts here on the side of the radiator cover so that I can then mount this piece, trying to get back so you guys can see, so that I can mount this piece in place. So I believe these are a 5mm, so, um, and I have a uh, rubber here. So it's all nice and soft mounted, but I'm going to undo those two and then simply put this on with the two bolts and we'll resume. All right, so that went on really easily. So as I said, it's just two bolts here and um, that has not resulted in any uh, rubbing issues with the um, aftermarket frame sliders I've installed here. Now as it is right now, this, side engine piece is slightly rubbing on this radiator hose so that's why you need to have this bracket on the bottom so that it is spaced out appropriately so that you don't have any rubbing going on with the hose i don't think that's ever going to be an issue in terms of rubbing through and then you spill all your coolant on the road but they give you the bracket um, so that it is nice and spaced out and you don't have any issues whatsoever. I don't know what the four bolts were that were included in the package. From factory, Honda uses a collared bolt like this to install the radiator cover. And in the Japanese website, K-Speed website's instructions, it suggests to use a washer so that you space out um, this part from the radiator cover. So this is the same thread and there are only four of these bolts. So I'm going to use the washer and then use the spring washer um, like so. So that's, that washer will go on the inside. So it's between this and the inner side of this cover. And I'm going to use this spring washer on the outer side like so. So it'll go through like that and then this washer will be on the inner side. So that's fitting really nice. And um, what you'll notice is that if you try to use the factory collared bolt, this collared part won't actually fit through the hole. So I'm pretty sure that that's the case that we're meant to use these parts here. Now, you don't wanna do anything up tight because you need to allow yourself some flex to install all these parts. So um, I will go back and remove these collared parts because as you can see, they don't sit flush. And I will leave some spacing here so that I can manipulate this center part to the front. So yeah, already looking quite beefy on the front there. Can't wait to get this installed. Uh, fit this center part. So I've undone these bolts from here because this part here is actually meant to slip in behind. So as you can see, because I've got these parts loose, I will have the ability to slot it in behind and then um, bolt it in. So um, the good thing about these, as you can see, they come with proper mounts. They're all centrally located. And here's what the back of the part looks like. So I'll now cut to after I've installed these parts. Okay, so I've got the three bolts 
to hold this center cover in. And again, I haven't got them tight because we've got one step left to go. The next step is we need to put the center brace in so that the um, inner sides of these pieces don't foul against the radiator hose or any other part. So underneath here, you'll see that there is one hole on uh, both sides. Okay, and so I've just uh, unrealized that if you install it like that, it's going to be hanging way low. So it might be a bit hard to see here, but I'll try and zoom in on it. Where is it? Just here. Is my finger seeing it? All right. So just where my finger is here, underneath the bike, there is a tiny little hole. And I'm not sure what purpose that serves, but this bracket is actually meant to sit like that. Um, and, on, and I believe on that side. So I need to try and fit this bracket from underneath now. So um, if you were looking through this whole video, I'd probably mount this bracket first to the top side of um, the hole that's in there. So it's just a so it's got to go right underneath my finger there. Let's see if we can get it in. Okay, so I got the bracket to <clears throat> slide in here. I simply just, from the left side of the bike, slid it up and then over the headers. And then, yeah, it because I've got all the bolts loose, the fairings was able to accommodate me fitting that bracket in. So when you buy this, it comes with these parts over that center bolt. So I'm just now going to use those to tighten it down in that bracket that is um, in there. Okay, so it all fit together really nicely. As you can see, I've got the nut and bolt here. And on that side, it goes, the bracket goes over the headers and there is a nut and bolt in the center. So with this bottom bracing, it spaces out the fairing so it doesn't touch. It's got a full finger between the fairing and the radiator hose. Doesn't catch or touch anywhere all along. Just show you what it looks like on this side. So as you can see, there is the bracket. Well and truly, this side's got, yeah, two fingers of um, clearance so no problem whatsoever no problem with your foot on the brake as you can see it's well and truly out of the way no problem with um, rubbing where the frame slider is aftermarket frame slider fantastic completely covers the frame of the bike so the last step now is to tighten these bolts you don't want to over tighten them because you don't want to crack the plastic in any way but i can bring them closer now to um where the plastic is as you can see i had them nice and loose so it allowed me to flex and install the center part
run you over, but then you start looking at aesthetics. And uh, if you're like me, you'll like the blacked out look, so that's what made me go for the special edition. And now I'm looking forward to um, installing the rest of the K-Speed part. So again, guys, please pause and subscribe to my channel. We're going to be looking at, in the coming days, the removal of the stock rear fender and tail tidy area. Um, I'm going to be installing my license plate on the eBay side mount that everybody purchases which will be sort of mounted on here but uh, according to our laws the license plate needs to be viewable from the rear so I'm going to have a special bracket that comes back. I'll also when my order from WeBike Wee arrives this week um, with my throttle tube I'll then be able to install the K-Speed handlebars and whatnot, uh, the grips and the aftermarket levers that I've purchased. So yeah, really liking the direction of this bike and I hope you are as well. From my last video, I made one little change to my quad lock wireless charger. So I've actually removed the stem so that the wireless charger sits nice and low. As you can see now, you hardly even notice that it's there when you leave the bike. So yeah, hop along for this little adventure of installing parts to this bike. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.